Elon Musk had his big robot festival, which I, I saw and I was like, well, those aren't actual robots. I don't know about you guys, but when you saw the videos and they were being labeled as like, okay, he's got the robot butlers that are being rolled out now and they're good to go. Look at this robot butler talking to somebody outside the event. I was like, there's clearly somebody that has a microphone that's controlling what this robot says. The mm -hmm. robot's not like processing this and talking, talking right. back to you. The robot was using terms like, um, or words like, um, uh, like stumbling I, over its words a it, little bit. Those may have been programmed in just cause like if it stumbles on words, it seems more human. No, they were controlled. It was like confirmed. It, oh, it was confirmed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I cause so they aren't ready to be sold because I was not too impressed with them. Like all I saw was a clip of it playing rocks, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. But it's like, what good does that do me? Yeah, no good. Yeah. Unless you can gamble it. If it has money, mm -hmm. if like when you buy the <laughs> yeah. robot, it's got like yeah. five thousand dollars, and you can win money off it. That would rock. A competitive Rochambeau right. league. Yeah, I saw. I saw the robot bartender. He's moving slow as fuck. Yeah, why do we need this stuff? We don't. Nobody wants it. I agree. The only people that want it are working in Silicon Valley at robot companies. That's my whole thing with AI. AI, there's, a, I guess, some stuff that makes, you know, it makes sense if you're like figuring out a search engine or looking stuff up. But the vast majority of, of AI stuff out there is only being uh, discussed so much because the people who are making AI are also putting out their own press talking about how this is going to change the world. It's the same thing with these fucking robot bartenders or robot butlers or whatever. Nobody wants a robot bartender. In fact, I, you know, we talked to that Luddite a while ago or the guy that wrote about the Luddites that would mm -hmm. smash all the printing presses and stuff like that. Um, I, I think there will be some people that will smash robot bartenders. I think it's Philadelphia probably. They'll probably get the ball rolling on that. I'm not going to actually smash a robot bartender if I see one, but I think I might start carrying around big magnets. All the time. Just put one on the back of it. Yeah, just put just put it on the bar. Just a giant yeah. magnet. Here you go. Um, this is my coaster. I like just, that. Just arm yourself with magnets against the robot uprising. Supposedly, they're going to eventually be able to walk the dog for you and things like that. Would you let a robot walk Blake? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. No chance. No okay. chance. Baby Dale is never going to let that happen. Blake would be terrified of the robot. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think that we should get one of the robot butlers for the office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At Barstool. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Could you fuck it, though? Eventually, I, I'm sure you're going to be able to fuck it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think Model 1 has a hole, though. That's, mm. that's the upgrade? You got to yeah. purchase the... Yeah. It's, it's a hole. It doesn't do, say do what you, kind it is. You want it to come with a hole or with, not? With sex hole. <laughs> yeah, mo Model 2.0 has a butthole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> More specifics. Yeah, just get up that poop shoot. Hell yeah, brother. If someone's going to try to fuck the robot, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Elon. But I, I... I mean, if that's your robot... Yeah, he fucks everyone. Yeah, <laughs> that's the quality up. control. <laughs> yeah. I just don't see why having a robot bartender would be a good thing. Like, all you're doing is you're, you're – I saw one person that was like a Silicon Valley VC guy that uh, tweeted out the video, and he was like, this is what you get for asking for $20 an hour minimum wage. Now look what you've done to yourselves. Have fun learning how to code. It's like, why are you actually trying to put people out of mm -hmm. work? Right. That why why are you taking any delight in that? Like, are you, do you think that maybe your children won't one day be bartenders or work in a restaurant? Like, fuck these people that are just trying to force robots. If I go into a bar, I like having a bartender there because you can talk to the bartender. Mm -hmm. You can have a conversation. The bartender can tell you something about that bar or about like I don't know the area that you're in. You can hang out and drink and have a good time with the bartender. With a robot, it takes all the personality out of it. Mm -hmm. And if you did want a robot bartender it wouldn't be shaped like a human it would be a box like an arm and then you insert the money and then it just kind of like makes the drink for you in that box and then shoots it out that's a great point donnie you yeah. would because the, otherwise the bartender the robot bartender can knock stuff over yeah the robot bartender probably won't be able to hear if it's loud if it's mm -hmm. like loud music playing in the bar yep um and then the robot bartender is not going to be able to handle like six drinks that are all very specific with, yep. I want this like a little bit dirty, but not too dirty. And they're going to be too precise with their measurements. That's right. Like you're never going to have, because it's nice to go get like a tequila soda and they slipped in a shot and a half instead of one. Yeah. The robot, you know, it's going to be programmed the moment that it's legally one shot. That's yeah. what we're giving you and nothing more. Drinks are going to get way, way weaker for I've sure. I've been noticing that in fast food places too around town. Like that if you go in, they don't give you a full cup anymore. Yeah. Like the clear cup, it'll go, there'll be like an inch 
below because they're all on automatic and they have it set lower. Mm -hmm. And so they're just skimming like it's like on Fight Club where they're just skimming a penny off the top. I don't mm -hmm. like that. Nope. I don't like that. And yeah, the surprise extra heavy pour is always nice because you can go to a bar and just be like, I'm planning on drinking, having one drink. Mm -hmm. And then they serve it to you and it's super strong. And you're like, well, they're getting me drunk. I have yeah. to, I, I got to yep. drink this. Mm -hmm. When I was in Lisbon, Portugal, they had a beer vending machine uh, while you waited to be seated at this restaurant. And that you just put your money in and then you put your cup below it and it filled it up to the top with beer. That was that was pretty cool. I that's like it when it comes up from the bottom too. Yeah. Those, oh, those yeah. are really cool. Yeah, that's magic to me. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how that works. Taffer was trying to explain it to us at one point. But yeah, fuck the robot bartenders. Nobody wants it. Nobody. Nobody wants this. Uh, the... The robot walking your dog, the robot babysitter or nanny. Yeah, Would you trust terrifying. your kids with it? The robot military working dog. Okay, now we're talking. What about the robo van that he revealed, though? Yeah, that one was a little bit cooler, I think. Yeah. I like the way that it, all of his designs are just like uh, my drawings from when I was six yeah. came to life. Well, his whole thing is that now is the future. It should look like the future. Because back in the 80s, when everyone's like, what's the world going to look like in 2020? And that's exactly what it looked like. All those crazy shaped cars and mm -hmm. robots and stuff. And he's like, it's about damn time we start looking like the future. Yeah, where are flying cars? Yeah. What about, that? What about those? There mm -hmm. is like a, there's like a new type of flying car released every year, but I don't think we're ever going to see them. I think they're a little bit too dangerous, too. Yeah. Like we can barely drive. Commonplace. Yeah. So that's the other thing is... I I do think that within the next probably 30 years, driving is going to be mostly done by robots. Mm -hmm. You know, the self-driving yes. cars. Do we want that? Because it would reduce traffic fatalities by a whole lot and, and a shitload of people die every year in a car crash. I'm okay with that. Like, I mean, it takes away like the whole drunk driving thing. Like there's so many drunk drivers out there these days. I'm very cool with it. If we do a lot of upgrades in the back seat, because I got an Uber the other day. It was like this Mercedes, like a really nice Mercedes. And I sat in the back and it was a sedan and it was the most comfortable thing I've ever sat on. Like bar none, doesn't matter what inside a hotel, wherever. Mm -hmm. So unbelievably comfortable. If we could get to the place where you have automatic drivers to places and you're in that type of comfort, sign mm -hmm. me up. That's a big liberty argument, though. People are like, I like the liberty that having my, my own car and being able to drive. I like that. I think you should be able to turn it off. For yeah, sure. you could yeah. still do it. You could still drive? I but would assume. Do you think in the, like 50 years from now, cars that, like new cars that are going to be made are going to have that option? Yeah, I think it's kind of like planes. A vast majority of planes are flown by autopilot from takeoff to landing now. Yeah. But you could still turn it off. Yeah. Even though it's way better. Yeah. So then drunk driving, you could you could be drunk and sit in the car while it drives, but then if something goes wrong and you have to take over, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. I'm hammered. You took a driverless taxi when you were at the Final Four? I did, yeah. Jeff D. Lowe was all over. He's all over the driverless taxi game right now. So he was like, you guys got to try this out. They got the, uh, was it Waymo? I think that's mm -hmm. what it's called. They got the Waymo cars here in, in Arizona. So we got in, and it freaked me out a little bit. Big time. Like it was changing lanes. There was a car that was uh, making a left-hand turn at the intersection in front of us. And it took it like a little too risky because we were coming up on the intersection. This car turns in front of us. And the uh, I I like gasped for a second. I was like, is it going to slow down? Yeah. Applied the brakes nice and gently. The only thing it was bad for was Mark Titus was in the car. And he had a bad wing experience the night before. And he had... Uh, he had some stomach issues and mm. Mark gets motion sick when he's in a car sometimes to begin with, if he's not driving. And so he would, by the time we got out of this car, he was just puking and shitting everywhere. <laughs> yeah. He won't mind me saying that. No. Yeah. I think we have to blame the wings though for that. Not the driverless car.